we are at the fast charger and supercharger at Nebenes and in this episode I will test the high speed uh, consumption. So I've done a uh, test in the previous one where I drove at 90 km per hour. That is relevant if you drive like, you know, around the city, a mix of city and uh, like highway driving without motorway. So motorway is considered about 120 km per hour and um, so in the previous test, I managed to average 163 watt hour per kilometer. In the high speed test now, well, I call it high speed, I bet it will be about 200, maybe more, actually 210. Yeah, because, you know, uh, i3 is not the most aerodynamic car. So, um, yeah, I'm charged to how many percent now? Mm -hmm -hmm. 91%. Yeah, I think that's enough because we don't have to do a full range test now. We just do a quick run back again and then we see the consumption and then we can estimate because I also measured in the previous video that we have th 38 kilowatt hours available energy so yeah uh, I guess we can just leave now then oh yeah we are hammering it uh, I have to cruise at well hang on a bit just here a bit see better there I have to cruise at 123 kilometers per hour uh, that is 120 on the GPS and the consumption uh, is somewhat high in the beginning here. Let me see, me adjust again. Uh, there. So, um, 265, but um, we just started. So we have to drive a little bit and then turn back to the starting point. Uh, but I noticed something. I also heard other people complain about the same thing is that uh, the i3 is somewhat unstable at high speed like I have to sometimes struggle to keep it on course and right now we have some a little bit of wind but not that strong wind but I guess it's just a uh, short wheelbase or something but uh, yeah the i3 is known for this not too stable at well I call it high speed it's high-ish speed for some Germans all right we are heading back now this is a fairly short run so, um, so far, ooh, okay, I'm just here. Uh, consumption is somewhat high, 235 watt per kilometer. And uh, yeah, we have some tailwind. We had headwind on the way here, and then we have tailwind on the way back. So, um, we'll see in the end what the result will be. But this is uh, um, almost higher than expected. Yes, we are back at the starting point here in Nebenes and uh, if you look at the screenshot here, we average 231 watt hour per kilometer and if you base it on uh, uh, 38 kilowatt hours available energy, it means that we can drive about 160 kilometers or 100 miles at these speeds. So uh, that is quite a big you know, increase versus the 90 kilometers per hour test I did. It's a, a 68 watt hour per kilometer uh, increase. So uh, Kona, which actually is uh, more aerodynamic, uh, only increased by uh, 60 watt per kilometer. That was during summer though. So, I mean, it's worse conditions here in winter, but um, you know, this tells me that um, i3 is not the most aerodynamic car. So, I mean, yes, Ionic owners, they'll be laughing at this level. <laughs> 230, yeah. And so they, they, Ionic can probably average less than 200 at least during the same condition. So, you know, maybe I should get uh, borrow an Ionic and test, yeah, nowadays to see how this. Hmm. Yeah. All right. But um, this is interesting. Um, I think the last test I should do is to see how how little energy uh, this car consumes when it's hypermiling because I, I bet it is low. It's probably less than hundred watt per kilometer. So with in the hypermiling test, I will have air conditioning off I will use eco plus I mean eco uh, what's it going again eco pro plus mode uh, you know just save as much energy as possible this one was with heater everything uh, but I use eco pro the normal one not the eco pro plus so yeah all right so I guess uh, that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this video so um, thank you for watching and bye bye